Hi, P timers. <laughs> um, so, oh, happy third month anniversary. Woohoo! <laughs> um, I'm drinking Darjeeling today. I'm really happy. I really feel like Darjeeling. It's weird how a cup of tea can just make you feel like, like everything's better with the world. It's been a crazy week, huh? <laughs> I'm not going to go into it because we all know what's going on, but oh my goodness. Um, <clears throat> so um, you might wonder why I actually put on a piece of jewelry. Well, actually two. I'm sure I'm sure they don't match, but, <laughs> but uh, Jen, don't look. <laughs> but I just felt like wearing something special because it's our third month anniversary. Yay. And uh, thank you so much, you guys, for, for um, showing up and for subscribing. Um, let's see, I've got, so I'm going to do, a. Uh, uh, okay, okay, just one more sip and then I'll get down, I'll get down to business, here we go, so good, okay, so I'm going to do, uh, last week I noticed two people had asked about Brad Pitt, so I'm going to talk about what that was like. So I've got, um, let's see, which is unusual that two people ask, you know, talk about the similar, well, I guess maybe it's not because of the um, thing I did with Susan Elizabeth Phillips, but let's see. So Judy C says, I was wondering after listening to your experience with Brad Pitt, one, do most characters, no, do most actors stay, I just, I just list, I said, do most act, do most actors uh, stay in character so you really don't get to know them the real them while working and two are most actors so down to earth and friendly like you I think not that's her that's not me <laughs> I know writers I have met are wonderful people and so supportive of each other hope you do not have a bad reaction to the new facial routine I break out when I try something new so I stay with the mild facial soap thanks for another great chat uh, yeah, no bad reactions. Um, it's all going good. And um, and then the other one was Greg Martinez. Hey, Meg, I love your tea time videos. Question, how was it working with Brad Pitt? And who would you like to work with? Also, what roles have you turned down? Okay, so um, so I'll, I'll try to answer some of those. And, and if I don't get to all of that, then I'll... Uh, I'll, um, I'll, I'll do it some other time. So, um, do most actors stay in character? It really depends on the actor and and how much you stay in character. I I um, was taught by the method, the you know um, sensory and all of that, because Peggy Fury was from um, she was from well she did the Lost Studio, but she was actor studio, so she had um, worked with Lee Strasberg quite quite a lot and. Um, and uh, she was, uh, so so I was taught that way, but for me, I always wanted to be myself, and then you climb into the character, so she's inhabiting you as well, but, but there's always, to me, it's always very important to have respect for the people around you who you're working with and allow them their space too. So uh, you do see some films or things of actors who, um, who uh, need to go in their own process, um, but sometimes it's quite selfish for the other actors around who are trying to do their work. So you can climb in, but you can still keep your logic. <laughs> you can still keep your, you know, sense of kindness and allowing other people their space to work. But I worked with all different types. Now, <clears throat> the way Brad uh, climbed in, it, it, it wasn't uh, challenging at all because he, it was easier for me because he just showed up uh, fully formed and as my character's husband. But there was still Brad there because I showed up in um, England. We were first in England um, and I was a little nervous. I had done Bomb Girls, which was a lot of fun. And then I'd done a very little um, independent film um, that wasn't a good experience. Um, the actors were a couple of them weren't weren't kind people so I um I wasn't sure if I wanted to do anymore I was like ooh, I, I think I'd rather stay tucked cozy in my 
at my home and keep doing my writing and stuff like that. But then when I got this and I worked with the director, my um, Eileen had me meet with him and he was so good that I, I wanted to do it. That's, that's my, that's what'll get me. If the director's really good and the little corrections he gave um, made it more interesting, more subtle, better. So after that, it was like, uh, I was like, I, I want to, I want to work with them. So I was very happy when they said yes. And I hadn't worked with Netflix before. Now Netflix, so I didn't know what that was going to be like. They, the, the sets that they designed, the, the, uh, equipment that was given, the way that they lit that film was just wonderful. Um, I had a really good experience working with them and I had a wonderful experience working with, um, David Michaud, Michaud, I'm not sure how to pronounce it because I just called him David, the director who's incredibly talented and working with Brad. It was one of my best film experiences I've had. My best film experiences I've had can be maybe counted on one hand because not all, I, I don't feel like um, everybody would, would uh, take me further in the character and make me better. But not only that, Brad was incredibly kind. He, um, the first day I showed up and we were shooting the scene um, in where we're at that dinner and he showed up and he was so gracious and he was so kind and put me immediately at ease. And I'd been out of like the big movie things for quite some time. And, um, and we just talked and got to know each other and, um, in, a, a, as character, because he's his character, but he was also so decent and his decency shone through. And, um, and then when we shot, then I remember once we were shooting a film, a section at the table in the restaurant where my character uh, is struggling with a lot of stuff and she's, she is trying to be strong and she's been strong for so many years of their marriage. But there's just a part of her that's just like reached that point. So we did the master and the master is the shot that you do really, really wide, far away. And then what they usually do is then they start coming in and covering. So we did the master and we did the, a, a bit, a bit closer, you know, still a master. And then they came and they were going to say, okay, everybody take a break. We're going to turn around now and we're going to cover Brad. And they started to do, and I see Brad get up. And it's easier when you get covered first because um, they cover a lot. So you'll do a scene, which is just a very short scene in a movie, but you could do it all day. You could do it two days. And you have to get to that point every time. And Brad got up and they were setting up the lighting um, to come in on Brad now. And he went and he talked to them. I didn't know. And then all of a sudden they said, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's been a change of plan. Even though they had lit it from the master and the wide um, to be moving in, covering him first, they changed it. And they changed it because he went and he said, I think you need to cover her because I think, you know, in case I wasn't able to keep up uh, the degree or the depth of whatever was what was going on with my character and they switched it and they changed it around. So it came first on me. And that kind of generosity is very, very, very unusual with, um, because he had to do the scene over and over and over again. And then, you know, they shot and they shot and they shot and they came closer and closer. And then they turn around to him and it's at the end of the day. And he's been saying the same lines and going through the stuff over and over again. And yet, um, he, he made that sacrifice for me and he didn't tell me, I just noticed. <laughs> and that's the kind of generous type of person he is. And um, incredibly intelligent, super well-read about all kinds of things. And also, um, I remember there's another uh, moment that, you know, uh, we were shooting in outside Berlin at this uh, gas station and I remember there being, uh, it's like the Autobahn and cars whipping past and everything like that. And I noticed 
that there was an apple tree in the middle of the off ramp and the freeways and the, it was a beautiful apple tree and it was full of apples and I was so excited. And I went and I, I got one of these apples. I, I picked one of the apples because it wasn't on anybody's property. It was in between an off ramp and the gas station and the thing. Because I realized that what had happened was, is that somebody was eating an apple driving along the freeway and they opened up their window and they tossed out this apple core and out of it, it planted and there came this tree with all these apples and it just seemed like a sign of hope to me. And I was so happy and I got this apple. And I remember some of the crew was kind of scared and the first day was like, uh, you, you aren't gonna eat that, are you? It might not be safe. But I'm like, it's an apple from a tree because I grew up on a farm and we always had apples from tree. And I said, of course I'm gonna eat it. You know, no pesticides or anything. So I washed it off and I wiped it off. And But I think some people thought I was a, a little bit odd, but it made me so happy. And then, um, I remember him asking me what I was finally about and I told him about it and he got it. He, 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 it was like, and, or, or maybe his character got it, but he did stay in character the whole time. And I, I told this story when I was, um, when I was talking on Susan Elizabeth Phillips, but I remember that it was just like, I knew that Brad was, uh, I had never met him before, which I've met a lot of people in Hollywood, but I'd never met him, but I knew that he was considered like, a big hot seat tots and you know um everybody's like oh brad pitt swoon swoon but i um i never got to like about pretty much any actor just because you meet them and you work them all the time but i remember at the rap party that um i went to it because that's what you're supposed to do and um that was in berlin and then um all of a sudden brad sweeps in and i'm so shocked because I had just seen him as my husband, like, oh, mm, mm, you know, <laughs> he's just like, oh, and then he comes in and I'm like, holy cow. And then I knew like, oh, oh, that's like the Brad, Brad Pitt. And I got really shy. I got really shy. Same thing when we had the, um, the opening where we had it in New York, where they had the film. And, um, and when I, when, He's like, hey, Meg. And then he said hello, and we were taking the picture. I was really shy because it wasn't my husband anymore. It was Brad. <laughs> it was so funny. Um, so so he was he's a real sweetheart. And um, and I just wish him all the best. I remember going to the um going, I flew to New York and Jen was there, she came too. And Jen arranged for me to have my makeup done for the press and stuff like that. I wasn't doing that much press. <laughs> I was just a small part in the film, but she arranged for makeup makeup people to come. And I remember I one one time she was out doing something and the makeup person came and they did my makeup and I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh no, what do I do? Cause she put these big floppy eyelashes on that were floop floop and like so much thick makeup, I could have scraped it off. And it was like really strong sort of garish colors. But I didn't know what to do because I thought, well, she's a professional makeup artist and, and, and I am older. So maybe, I don't know, maybe makeup sits weird or whatever. So I had to go and I had to do a, a radio thing for NPR with, with the director and, um, and uh, somebody else. I can't remember who. And I show up and I see, I see David Michaud. And he kind of blinks a few times when he looks at me. And then... He's like trying to have a conversation with me, but he's never seen me with all that like thick, thick makeup and these eyelashes are going flop, flop. And I had one of my favorite brooches that I had on and some on my little jacket and somehow it got dislodged or I got pocket picketed or brooch picket, <laughs> pocket picket. I don't know what, but, um, Sometime in the time of going to that thing and getting back to the Jen's apartment, my, my beautiful brooch was gone and I was so sad. But anyway, I come back and I've got it. Then we're going to be going and doing the um, thing. And Jen's like, oh no, what did she do to your face? And we had to get ready for the, um, for the opening. And Jen's like, come here, come here. And she's, 
she had the, no, she had somebody else come and they did my makeup and she didn't like that makeup either. And so I was like, oh, thank you. And they left, you pay them. And then, so then she's like, come here, come to the bathroom. She said, okay, thank you. She shooed them out the door and she's like, and she's scrubbing my face and she's got the sponge and she's doing my eyes and she's changing the makeup. And she's like, I don't know what they were thinking. I got to take a lot of this off and put some here. And I was, um, and I felt so, so loved because she was, um, she was standing really close and we're sisters, you know, like we used to share a bed and stuff sometimes, but, but we had gone, gotten big and we'd grown up and, I could feel her. I'd never been that close to her for a very, very, very long time in terms of physically close, where when she was doing my eyes and my eye um, eyeliner and, and the mascara and stuff, I could feel her warm breath on my face. And, um, and I just, I just, I just, I just felt so, so loved, like, so like our, our, you know, we didn't have that kind of thing with our mom. And, um, and so she did, she got mine. Jen had to get ready. She was going too. she was going to be walking the red carpet too. And she was, did my thing. And then the car was downstairs and we'd gotten our clothes. And, and that's how much, that's like the generosity of Jen is that we were in the limo going to the place where we're going to be like getting out and getting people taking our pictures. And Jen's in the car putting on her own makeup because she spent her makeup time fixing my makeup. That's right. <laughs> That's my sister. I'm going to keep that memory in my memory bank until the day I die. Um, because that was really, really, Oh, and then we were there and, um, uh, Jen's publicist had said, Oh, Oh, Brad's come in go on, go say hello and take a picture. But I knew because he was now Brad, not Brad, my husband. <laughs> he was like, oh, and that's like, oh no, I'll probably only have, cause there's a crowd around him, one chance to say hello. And Jen had to go to the bathroom because she, she had put her makeup on in the car and one of her eyelashes was starting to lift up. So she went to fix it. So I'm like, no, no, I'm gonna wait till Jen comes because I wanted uh, her to be able to meet him too. So, uh, so anyway, that was what it was like. Um, it's it, and it was two different contradictions. And there were a few more questions in here about acting and, um, and, and what, what it's like. Some people are in character. Some people aren't in character and either, either one, whatever works, just as long as it doesn't infringe on the rights of the other people who are also creative people who are trying to create a, a safe space to create their, their own art as well. So that, that's, my, that's my thought on it. And oh, my hair is almost dry from my shower now. <laughs> I got dressed up because of our three months with a little bit of jewelry, but um, yeah, I didn't blow dry my hair. <laughs> uh, Alrighty. Well, have a wonderful weekend, you guys. And uh, hopefully this week is a little bit calmer than last one. Bye-bye. <laughs>